welcome back welcome home <laughs> welcome back to Bahati Life YouTube channel it feels so good to have you guys here hanging out with me right now I'm not gonna lie I am a little late when it comes to uploading this video probably because I've been handling some stuff it's way beyond my emotional maturity <laughs> I'm not even gonna lie to you <laughs> But it's all well and good, dude. It's there to teach us lessons and it's necessary, necessary parts to just leveling up, you know? And I, I say it in jest, you know, beyond your my emotional maturity, but clearly I'm handling it like a G and that just feels really, really good for me. And I've got such an amazing support system around me that you know, they're, they're hired for the best, you know? So it's just really cool. It's all good things. Don't get me wrong, but it's still a lot. Can we talk about this week ahead? I mean, that's why you're here, right? That's why we're vibing. How are you guys feeling? Mercury retrograde is definitely doing the doozy, doing the most. Like I said, up until this point, you know, keep an eye on relationships, keep an eye on communication because Mercury ruling communication and not contractual agreements, but, um, or commitments, but, um, the, 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 the documents that we sign, the things that we want to commit ourselves to our mind, the way that we're thinking and what we ideally think that we want to stick with, you know, our minds are going to start changing. Our minds are going to start shifting. And in the sign of Libra, there's a really strong need to kind of check, double check, triple check, change your mind as more information reveals itself. Mercury rules all of those things. And we have to kind of be open to that. Don't be surprised, of course. I mean, this goes without saying that Mercury retrograde has a really strong ten tendency to bring back exes, partnerships, people of the past, friendships of the past, or old conversations and dialogue that you may need closure on, things that is that you may need to hear. That Of course, that happens anytime. But as Mercury is moving to the sign of Libra, Libra naturally wants to harmonize and partner with others, um, you know, and now more than ever, it, there, you're going to see some crazy relationship breakdowns. I just had this conversation with some of my girlfriends by the beach after the sun set, down, set we were sitting on the shore, just watching the water come in and, and roll out. The, the sun went from these bright oranges and pinks and purples and red. It was so striking. And our conversation just naturally kind of shifted into our experiences lately. Like, what has it all been? And then when we kind of compared our experiences, they some of my friends were surprised. They're like, that's exactly when this happened. There's got to be something going on. There's got to be, I believe in astrology. And I believe in you, Jess, when you talk about these things, because the timing of it all just happens right not only for them, but for people around them in certain cir circumstances that change their life and their direction of everything, the course of everything around the same time. And that's literally what it is. We're all under the same blanket of stars. We're all under the same blanket of experiences. And we have to learn to humble ourselves and to be respectful of that. So um, one thing that has really been coming through is these old um, issues, I was explaining it to them, these old issues that we thought or we think that we've migrated away from, we thought, we think that we've evolved away from, and it just kind of shows up in a different packaging, right? So what I told them, and I'm going to tell you guys this, of course, because you guys are like family to me, but what I told them is it's like if you find that you have an, an allergy to something or you find that you have a, you have a, a desire or you crave something, or a bag of chips, right? So you find the bag of chips with the packaging that strikes your fancy, that makes you think, okay, this is exactly the type of bag of chips that I want. You open the bag, it's half filled. You're like, okay, I wasn't expecting that. I was thinking we full, fully filled, whatever. You eat it, you have an allergic reaction, or over time, it doesn't vibe with your body. It doesn't get you your desired outcome. Maybe it might be temporary relief, but long-term, it just messes you up, right? So you learn over time, every time I eat this bag of chips, it doesn't make me feel good. It doesn't help me hit my goals, whatever. So you decide I'm not going to eat this bag of chips anymore, right? So then you go back to the store, maybe even a different store, and you say to yourself, I still have the same craving. What type of snack do I want? You pick up a bag of chips. You're like, this is totally different than the original bag of chips that I used to get. And then you open it. 
you eat it and you find out it has the same outcome, the same. So what it is that I'm saying is that with these planets, with Pluto retrograde, was retrograde, Saturn retrograde, Jupiter retrograde, Neptune retrograde, Chiron retrograde, Uranus retrograde, Mercury retrograde, all of these major planets are teaching you about your habits, your natural inclination to pick out certain things and hope for the best, but somehow maybe have the same outcome. It's like a repeated offender, a repeated pattern. This is when the planets teach us to, um, this is when a planet, sorry guys, my battery. This is when the planets teach us to have compassion with ourselves, but be open to changing our minds, be open to see and smell and taste and use all of our senses in order to pick up the red flags, to pick up the things that you are going to need to do differently because from past experiences, it didn't pan out. Now there's some 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 situations that you wanna to continue to do, which means that you wanna feel empowered in order to make a choice to honor your craving, right? So you know that if you are hungry, your pattern, the repeated pattern that's healthy for you is to look for food and to eat. However, you have learned that if you eat such and such food, that's not gonna make you feel good or it's gonna make you feel good for a small amount of time and then you're gonna feel the repercussions of it or maybe you're gonna have an allergic reaction, whatever the case is. This is what a metaphor that I, is that I wanna share with you guys that you don't wanna punish yourself for the fact that you are hungry. Okay, you don't want to punish yourself for the fact that you want a relationship. You don't want to punish yourself for the fact that you want a career that has purpose and meaning and direction and fulfills, you know, all of your desires. You don't want to beat yourself up for that. You don't want to, you know, attack yourself for that natural feeling. Okay, you were given that feeling for a reason. However, you do want to be open and be curious and explore how you quench that thirst, whatever that thirst is, okay? So hopefully that metaphor, as long as that metaphor is, you guys know I'm the queen of metaphors, hopefully that does serve you at, okay, how these planets are working with us these days. So yes, there's, you know, with the retrogrades, it'll show you, you do have a hunger here, you do have a desire here. And having said that, we are going to make sure that you are given the space in order to explore different outcomes and make this your new habitual response instead of what you normally do, okay? Um, this is big time for, I, I don't know why, but the word student is coming through. We are all students of life. None of us are expect, expected to be masters of life. We're here to live, we're here to grow and share our experiences with each other. So this is where you ask for help and connect with different people who can help you, who can inspire you. Um, and you wanna be consistent with that. You definitely wanna be consistent with that, okay? So um, on the 10th, you guys, Saturn, the planet that rules structure and routine and big time contract contractual agreements and the foundation and rules and regulations will finally, 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 finally be moving direct. If you guys see any bouncing or anything in the background or hear any squ squishy toys, it's because my Nova girl, my new pup, um, the guardian of my dreams is at my feet right now. And she is also a puppy and a Doberman puppy at that and very, very clumsy. So she likes to knock things around as she moves. And um, I love it because it makes me laugh. But if I'm filming and you see the camera shift or anything like that, it's because her butt is uh, bouncing around <laughs> under the table a little bit. She's so cute. Uh, but yeah, Saturn is finally moving direct, you guys. And when I tell you, Saturn just has such a heavy hit when it comes to the lessons that it is that it wants to teach us. I mean, that goes without saying. And Saturn finally, you know, moving in the sign of Aquarius, it just impacts like the whole world in such a weird way that we have to be so open to, right? And I've I've almost been like a broken record talking about this, especially as Saturn was moving through the sign of Capricorn where we're just eyes on government, eyes on humanity, eyes on the earth, eyes on real estate. And I mean, right on the money, This the, the housing market has been absolutely wild and totally stretched for those to the point where people can't find homes and you know so this is this is literally played out and if you guys don't believe me please check out my last videos because you will see it there the other thing with um saturn saturn and moving in the sign of aquarius i mean we're going to be looking at our communities our tribes people as we know it, our neighbors the world as we know it okay the world is becoming a very small place so 
Um, just keep an eye on the internet. Keep an eye on internet businesses and those types of things. They're really going to start taking a heavy hit there. But in your own intimate life, you guys, it's really trying to find structure in something that is actively cracking around you okay and aquarius can rule something different within your within your life for some of you guys it could rule your seventh house of relationships saturn sitting here and just taking a sledgehammer to how you show up for relationships or how your partners show up for for you it's saying literally you want to um not and I, it sucks to say this but you're gonna get beat down through these transits in order to be be evolve and it feels very punishing but don't run away from it or else you can really crush some ma massive lessons some major lessons of growth that you don't want to steer yourself away from at the same time there's gonna there's this um i can't help everyone type of energy here you're not there to save the whole world you're not there to save humanity that's a very heavy responsibility, a very heavy burden. And with Saturn moving to the sign of Aquarius, a lot of you guys are going to feel very like, I don't say triggered, but you can see how crazy things are. And you're just like, well, what can I do? And the thing is like Saturn rules our responsibility and Aquarius rules humanity. But the reality is, is like, it can't just be one person. It's going to be all of us who come together. So apply this message to not only your intimate life but also to what's collectively happening for all of us and in, in humanity at this point in time so mean while we're watching these crazy things happening around the world around the globe and we're just like how can i help how can i be of service how can i show up how can i be strong how can i be a leader in this there's also aspects within yourself that are actively being destructed and it could be um or destroyed it could be your finances, it could be your health, it could be headaches, it could be tension, it could be your friendship circles, it could be your self-identity. And you, with Saturn, it's teaching you to not be so harsh. It's as harsh as Saturn is, it doesn't actually appreciate harshness. And it's only harsh and cold and direct and forward with us because it sees when there's a problem. But even though it sees a problem and it's telling you the truth, it doesn't want to hurt you within that. It's not its goal is not to hurt you, to punish you, to lash out at you, or to make you feel abandoned or isolated. It actually is putting things into place in order to protect you, but sometimes that can look like isolation. But it's in those moments of isolation, that's when you start connecting and looking for a higher purpose or higher connection with the divine, with yourself, with your family, whatever the case is, okay? So for everyone, it's totally different. I do want to tell you guys, um, with also Jupiter retrograde here, Saturn finally moving direct, Pluto moved, moved direct, um, Neptune is still retrograde, Chiron is retrograde, Uranus is retrograde, please do the baby steps, right? So let me show you some of the cards that I pulled out for you, and I know that I'm talking pretty fast, but most of it's because I'm channeling, and the other part is because I'm happy, I'm excited, and I'm just so happy to be here, and just gratitude has just been immense lately, but we have we have uh the magician card is what i pulled for us the hanged man and also the knight of pentacles what is this telling me right now with the hanged man and with the knight of pentacles and with the magician card knight of pentacles is saying please take these baby steps you'd be surprised how impactful even just a small step is to your growth to your progress um, and with the hanged man, it's even those tiny steps are there to enlighten you. They're there to inspire you. They're there to force you into a position or inspire you to drop and release control so that you can float into a position of surrender with the universe and receive total divine enlightenment. This is something that I talk very, very deeply about in the Sacred Circle Tarot School, which I'm thinking about closing just for the summer, but even though it's not summer, it's fall just because I'm going to be writing my book and I'm just really wanting to hyper focus on that for so sacred circle. I'm going to send you guys an email shortly on as far as dates and times and what that's going to be looking like. Um, and if you want to reserve your space within sacred circle before we close, then go ahead and do that because usually when I open up prices kind of change a little bit, I'll link it down below. But with the hangman, you guys, this is really, you know, 12 actually breaks down into the number three. And this is where we want to be receptive into divine enlightenment, that holy trinity where things just naturally um, effortlessly align simply by us surrendering. And the magician is very masculine, but the hangman is very feminine energy, masculine 
magician says, I have everything that I need in order to manifest my highest and greatest desires. The first step with that though, is taking that, that, um, that taking that plan and moving it into action. Okay. And as Chiron, the planet of the wounded healer, um, the asteroid that r rules the space that um, shows our, our wounds, but also our vulnerability and our, our greatest strength, how we're going to connect to others, how we're going to heal ourselves and heal humanity and leave those lasting gifts for as our legacy. Um, with Chiron retrograde here, it's saying, are you feeling empowered enough in the actions and the steps that is that you're taking? Um, definitely with Saturn, I'm sorry, with the sun squaring off with Pluto on the 17th, you are going, this is a day where you want to mark in your calendar. What's going to happen uh, the days around this, especially that weekend? How are you feeling? What is triggering you to make you kind of need to assert yourself, assert your boundaries, speak your truth? The reason why you're triggered is because Spirit has given you a voice for your anger and your anger says this part of you needs to be an advocate. This part of you needs to be voiced. This part of you does not need to be squashed or or pushed off to the side. It actually needs to be spoken up for and and revealed. And I know that a lot of astrologers out there and a lot of intuitives will sometimes look at the sun square Pluto and they'll be like, okay, this is... Um, you know, people abusing their power. And of course that's there too. But as an intuitive and as someone who's been studying astrology almost all of my life, I can see how these challenges are opportunities for massive, massive growth that reveals itself. And I feel that sometimes it's just enough friction, especially with sun moving to the sign of Libra. Libra wants to people please. It wants to harmonize with others. But when it squares off with Pluto in the sign of Capricorn, which says, I know who I am, I know my worth, I know what is valuable, I know what I'm working towards, I want this for the long haul, sometimes you gotta feel all of that friction and be challenged enough to speak up and to speak out and to not use your power in order to abuse others, but understand your power in order to make a positive difference, not only for yourself, but for the world around you and the world as you know it, and that is so true. And a lot of you guys for the last few months and definitely the last year, you've been really challenged in your your ability to break generational curses, to speak up for yourself. You've been really challenged in, um, you know, to be creative and to be flexi flexible and fluid with things that is that you can't control kind of happening around you. It's caused you to reflect on major milestones and major major aspects of growth within your own life that are unavoidable and undeniable. I mean, divorce is huge. The breaking of a family is huge. Um, the building and breaking down of a business is huge. The breaking down and the building of health, huge. Major purchases, major, ma major contracts, major exposure. This is crazy life changes and life developments that are happening and we have to talk about them openly and honestly. We just have to. So you've had a lot of time, whether you've wanted it to or not, in order to not only reflect on the expansion that's been happening in your life, but also the evolution, the change, the transformation that has also been occurring as well. And now that these planets are now moving direct, you've had enough time to sit back. Again, some of you guys are forced with your back against the wall, but either way it happened, everything happens for a reason. And now it's time to build, it's time to get back out there, it's time to do something with this. And I just heard the word reward. There will be a reward with this. As I'm saying that, my loves, look at this. I totally forgot that I pulled these cards. We have the Nine of Cups, and we also have the Lover's Card Reversed. Now, of course, with the Lover's Card Reversed, this could represent, um, well, it can rep totally represent splitation of relationships or an inability to choose the right person, um, almost like an ostrich trying to putting their head in the sand and saying, I don't want this, I don't know what I want, I don't wanna see it, it doesn't, it's not real, it doesn't exist. You're literally putting your hand in the sand and you're, you're, you're stopping yourself. Don't get caught up in what other people are incapable of doing, especially when it comes to relationships, partnerships, those types of things, you guys. You know what you want. You have clearly been illuminated, especially with the hangman here, especially with the magician card. You have clearly been illuminated 
in in as far as what you want, what you will accept, what you want your life to look like, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The list goes on and on. So don't allow someone else who decides that they don't want to evolve or they want to keep their head in the sand or bury their head in the sand instead of facing their ego and 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 becoming more capable into their potential and manifesting their desires. Don't allow that to stop you from stepping into your heart's truest, truest desires and really strong divine align, uh, alignment. Remember you guys, sun, Mars, and Mercury retrograde is happening in the sign of Libra. Libra naturally wants to partner up. It wants to naturally harmonize, but not to the detriment of your own self, your own will, your own principle. And not everybody can come where it is that you're going. Yes, that's going to be the hardest lesson. I realize that, with especially with Pluto moving through the sign of uh, Capricorn and Saturn moving through the sign of Aquarius. Aquarius naturally can be emotionally removed in order to do the right thing, but it's it's telling in Jupiter retrograde moving through the sign of Aquarius. It says literally like your heart can want something, but your soul, your mind, your higher self knows that despite how much your heart is in love with this, despite how much your heart wants this, you still have to see, sense, and know what is for you, what is right for you, and not make compromises when it comes to that. And actually putting yourself first sometimes is the best thing that you can do in order to make a ripple effect so that others can meet you where you stand. Or you can find like-minded spirits that are going to be a better match for you at, along this path within, in, within your life. That can be a really hard lesson for some of you guys to accept, especially when you're talking about karmics, karmic relationships, soulmate ties, twin flames, etc., etc., or just, you know, life partners or partnerships that you've dealt with, with people that you have children with or certain connections with. I totally understand. I totally get it. Um, I'm not saying that it's easy. Clearly with these planets, you guys, I can look at these planets and see the burden without having to sit directly with you while we're having coffee or juice. Shout out to Squeeze Juice Works or something, or FK. I don't know what this is, but it is delicious. I got the Boss, because of course I did, Boss boss Bitches doing boss things with apple, pineapple, kale, cu cucumber, lemon, and ginger, which is absolutely delicious. I typically juice at home, but I didn't have time today, so I got this one instead, and Nurgertz. Anyways, moving forward. Um, but I don't have to sit and have juice with you right now, even though this is probably what we're doing. We're probably vibing, probably drinking lemonade or tea or coffee or juice, whatever, you, whatever you've whatever got. Um, also, don't underestimate the power of a good lemonade. <laughs> Random. But lemonade is so healing. Anyways, you should have lemonade at least once a day. Or lemon water. Whatever you choose. I'm just saying. Um... But yeah, I don't have to sit with you and have an intimate conversation and have the details to know what's going on. I can see it within the chart. It's crazy. I know. I know. <laughs> but um, you'd be surprised how somehow splitting can actually give you everything your heart truly wants, needs, and desires. Not only your own needs, your own desires, but more importantly, what spirit the divine wants and sees for you, which can be greater and will be greater than our own expectations of ourselves that part the other um cards that is that i'm having that i'm seeing here is the five of wands the five of swords the sun card and the ten of pentacles so this is where spirit is guiding you to remember mm, i just heard the word inclination like an um to be inclined towards what are you inclined towards what do you want what does spirit want for you? Not even so much what you want for yourself. What does spirit want for you? What does spirit want for you? I send to my Sacred Circle Tarot School a lot of deeply probing questions for them to participate within their homework assignments because I do give them homework assignments. And those homework assignments can take them anywhere between two to three weeks to complete, myself included, because they're very, very soul searching and I give them those prompts in order to work with their tarot and work with their higher self and work with their guides in order to gain better understanding and a grasp, not only of the tarot, but of themselves and of their own personal power. That's what makes my tarot school so different. One of the many things that makes my tarot school so different from all of the other tarot schools out there. 
I do not stop with just the basic meanings of each of the tarot cards. We take it so much deeper than that. It is life-changing. And I can say that confidently. Um, but with that, you guys, what does, I'm going to give, I'm going to give to you what I give to them all the time. What does spirit want for you? Have you asked that of yourself and of spirit lately? If not, I want to see you ask that question now. And as I'm saying that, my puppy just rested her, her head on my foot. And I can tell because I can feel what her chin feels like. She's such an angel. Franklin is here too, by the way. If those of you guys are wondering, they're my sweetie babies. All right. So with the five of wands, with the five of swords, and with the sun card, I can clearly see and feel and sense spirit saying to you and speaking to me to tell you this level of discernment and this question, this conversation that is truly going to open the door for you to receive more for yourself and from your own experiences. I feel that this is where you're going to be inspired to kind of let some things down. Take that message how you will. There are going to be some things that you need to let down, some people that you need to let down as you are being pulled up, as you're being pulled forward, because you are progressing, you are evolving. All right. <laughs> She's so cute. Um, yeah. So five of wands says, as you let those things down, I'm looking down at the cards while I'm talking to you. So if you guys are wondering, as you guys are putting this thing down, what spirit leads you to, to rest, lay to rest you are going to stop having to fight that battle. You are going to actively choose to not show up and continue to fight that battle. With that, you are going to be able to soak up and absorb abundance, prosperity, blessing, love, a different opportunity. That spirit is going to open the door for you to receive, especially in the hanged man magician card position. And as I'm saying that, we have the king of pentacles here. Okay, there is a sense of something that is of incredible worth and value that you are about to step into, that you are about to receive, trust and believe. This has everything to do with the weight, the magnitude, the intensity of the Pluto and Saturn and Jupiter transits as they are retrograde and as they're moving direct. Trust and believe, mark my words. On the 18th, on the 15th, on the 10th, these are all high prime days of October um, 18th too, with Mercury moving direct, Jupiter moving direct, okay, um, Saturn moving direct on the 10th. These are high prime days, star value days, where you're going to feel immense shifts. Sometimes they can feel bad or tough or intense before they feel good and light, but they are there to allow you to expel and to wipe yourself clean, of the, the burden that you have been carrying or that the planets are lifting up off of your shoulders. Allow yourself to be supported in that and allow yourself to let that go. Who do you have to let go of? What do you have to let go of in order for you to receive this lightening in your energy and in your aura? And in the meantime, I want to encourage you to take some time to sit with your own cards, to sit with your own journal, and to sit with your own intuition, to speak to the spirit, to speak to your higher self, and to speak to the divine, and ask them, what do you want me to let go of? What do you want me to surrender? Who do you need me to let down right now so that I can be lifted up at this moment, at this time in my life? I hope this message resonates for you guys. Um, please subscribe to the YouTube channel if you feel called to. Give that thumbs up if it's helped you in some way, shape, or form. Of course, there are plenty more videos where this came from. You guys know I always do my readings a bit differently when it comes to pulling the charts and pulling the cards. I allow spirit to speak to me always, and I love that for me. I love that for me, and I love that for you because I get to share it with you. Until then, you guys, I'll see you guys in my next video. Uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Bye. You were created to live a life of magic, abundance, love, and blessing, all of which will be up to you to call into your life with perfect divine timing. The Hottie Life Apothecary is the magical home of Jessica Alexandria, where you will find a wide variety of mystical items to help you to manifest your heart's truest desires, as well as tools to help you tap into your unlimited spiritual potential. Browse the online apothecary and find hand-fixed candles to magnetize your intentions towards you. You'll find thyme and star-soaked conjure oils charged to anoint your petitions, your body, and personal magical items. 
You'll also find the highest quality of herbs for creating your own potions and concoctions and even reserve time and space with Jessica Alexandria herself who will work with you to create something special and truly yours. Each item found within the apothecary are created with intention in alignment with the movement of the stars to make them even more powerful totems to bring into your own sacred space. Visit BahadiLife.com to browse the apothecary and don't forget to follow Jessica on Instagram at BahadiLife where she posts daily messages to uplift, inspire, empower, and to remind you of your magical potential along your magical journey. Blessings to each and every one of you. I'll see you there.